happening. First of all, let's talk about SpaceX and this most recent successful birthing. You know, it's awesome to be back at Moon and Back, and the thing that when we talked about last time was about fiscal responsibility, limited government, and free markets in space. And with the events that have transpired over the past week with SpaceX, uh, the third successful launch of Falcon 9, and now with Dragon successfully being birthed, to the International Space Station and cargo being removed, um, I think we can say that we definitely have a free market in space using limited government, and that is exactly what the Tea Party is all about, specifically Tea Party in space. So I think now, as we're moving forward, uh, there was a really big fight for CC Dev 2 funds, but I think now we need to start thinking about CCI cap and fully funding that using the Space Act agreements. Um, we ha now have a history and a track record that shows that if, when you use Space Act agreements, um, they really can work and we can produce a magnificent result uh, using that system. So we are just absolutely elated for the SpaceX and NASA team. Um, I think Elon said it best when he said, we stand on the shoulders of giants. Uh, the same can be said for this too. We need to keep on building on that and hopefully as we move further along into the commercial crew and de uh, development, ooh, as we move along onto the commercial crew and development program, we'll see that uh, it's definitely the way to go. Now, uh, you guys have famously been uh, against the FAR contracting. Um, what sort of, of steps will you be taking to try to make sure that, that, that FAR and cost plus contracting does not enter into the commercial spaceflight realm? Well, it's been really interesting battle because I've been going to Capitol Hill uh, a lot last year and some this year, and we've continued to show the difference between a Space Act agreement and a FAR-based contract. And what we found out is, is that a lot of the Capitol Hill staffers and even the members themselves don't completely understand the difference between the two. And so when we get an opportunity to go into an office and say, look, this is the difference between the two, and then we're allowed to go ahead and show the savings between the two, it's really quite momentous. Um, there was a report out about uh, Falcon 9 and Dragon last year, and it basically showed that SpaceX built Falcon 9 for about $390 million, and if NASA wanted to build it, um, it would be somewhere between $1.5 and $4 billion. Well, that caused a lot of ruckus, and so NASA came back and said, oh, it would only cost us $1.5 billion, but still, you know, the savings is there, so we need to make sure um, that we embrace best practices for our accounting and for our costs in building new things. And look, NASA's a winner in this. NASA is getting a new service where they can take their resources and they're going to be limited with our economic situation in America. And they're going to be able to take those resources and focus them in other areas that the private sector can't do, whether that be uh, new transportation systems to Mars, uh, going to the moon using uh, some type of nuclear energy. So the, that's where NASA needs to focus, and then we can go ahead and let the commercial providers handle up, getting everything up to LEO and letting them assemble it just like they did the space station, and then NASA can go do what, what it does best, which is explore.